first reaction when you saw this when we got to Italy in 2017? Yeah, it was kind of interesting because it looked a lot like the photos. Like I saw all the people everywhere. That's the first thing you notice. There's a shitload of people everywhere. The fact that it feels like you're walking around somewhere in the 1700s. The deeper you get into the canals, the more fishy it starts to smell. It's definitely more fishy right now, yeah. We are here to explore the first ever ghetto in Venice. So they took us to the second time to come to Italy to realize that this even existed. Like off of the beaten path in Venice, we're trying to figure out with Google Maps how to head there and like see what it looks like. Every time we come to Venice, it seems like it's garbage day. Which for Venice is basically every day. It's kind of small, so they can't really put their garbage anywhere. So literally, as soon as you turn away from the main street, it gets so much more quiet and peaceful. And this is this is my fi favorite type of Venice. When there's no tourists, it's a whole other vibe here, a whole other city. And we found it. You know what I always wonder? When you hang your laundry to dry here, what's the smell of it? Cats must love Venice. I think we're in the middle of a cat turf war. This looks insane. This is like one, two, three. It's like six or seven stories all the way up there. It's like um, it's like in the fourth or fifth story, just hanging there. How do they get it down? Hopefully it doesn't fall down. That's what I want to know. How do they get it down? I'm sure they got some kind of 300 year old system for doing it, but it's just incredible to see all of these people living right side by side with one another in these giant buildings. You know, you're in Venice when the uh, everything just keeps getting smaller and you have to duck in order to get it somewhere. So this is the main square that's over 500 years old now. Well, this might be the first time that I've ever seen a spot in Venice where there are no tourists. And I don't mean that hyperbolically, there are literally no tourists here. We came in under this little tunnel area. We couldn't see a single person except for the garbage collectors. So, wow, this is like finding a little tiny hidden gem in Venice. So you have the old synagogues here. You have quite a few places to stay and a lot, well, I think like three or four kosher restaurants that I can see. Sadly, they're all closed right now. I think they're probably open later on in the evening. What is that? The MGM kosher restaurant. <laughs> oh, perfect. I love how they advertise air conditioning and outdoor seating. <laughs> it's kind of rare here another place and it's closed vernon just noticed something interesting kosher spritz so i'm pretty sure over there the little wooden building it's part of a, one of those hidden synagogues unfortunately it seems like everything is closed today and it's saturday i messed up imagine climbing up all those stairs in sandals 500 years ago the one lonely shirt maybe they forgot about it it's amazing after so many visits to Venice, we've never been here. Like I think it's because we've always gone to just the more touristy places. You know, one of the problems when you live anywhere is that you often don't explore the place you live like a tourist. Toughest decision to make, what pastry to get in the morning, right? <laughs> I think your drink literally took double anybody else's at least. You don't see frappuccinos very often here in Italy. And I thought it was on the menu and I would get one because I want to see what it's like compared to something that you get at like Starbucks. It doesn't feel like it weighs anything though. It feels super light. <laughs> see? Oh, wow. Yeah, it feels like there's nothing in there except whipped cream. You sure it's not like one of those prop plastic drinks? <laughs> no, I don't think so. So what else did you get? So this is pear and chocolate and this is cheesecake. It kind of tastes like I'm drinking coffee whipped cream. But it's really cold, it's so good right now. So one of the things you kind of have to be careful for sometimes is you get to the end of these little streets here and there's no way you can go to the next alley. It just kind of stops right here. Hey Vern, what'd you think about that cafe? It was awesome. I mean, honestly, it was kind of like a, it was a little hipster style cafe that you get in some trendier parts of cities. But this is, we said like we said earlier, this is a part of the city that we've never been to and probably would have never found even just wandering by accident. So it was kind of nice to find some little shop like that. And I think for two coffees and two um, slices of cake, it was about 18 euros. So that's about $20. You have a little boat, your dog and your kid on the boat. So not only garbage men have to use those little carts, that's how you get produce to your shop too. It seems like all of Italy is constantly just having a workout. Do people here ever have like problem with theft of their laundry? Like with from perverts and stuff? Yeah, because I see like, I see a lot of, you know, intimates that maybe should not be hung. Maybe they're just so used to it that they don't even mind anymore. The dead ends, no. Another dead end, see? 
even Google Maps can't help you out in this situation. Amsterdam has problems sometimes with bicyclists and drunk people in the yeah. canals. I wonder if Venice has that issue. I never looked up those like statistics. Somebody just is not paying attention. They're scrolling on I their mean, phone and they just take one step too many. The thing is, it might not be deep, but it looks really dirty. Yeah, it does. All right, third time's the charm. So we actually found the right way that we were supposed to go. Um, the other two times led in a, in a dead end, as you saw. We were wondering for like a good two minutes what this was, and it's a mechanic for boats. So I don't want to say we're lost, but we don't know where we are. And everything keeps leading straight into water. And there is no reception here whatsoever. We're like in the northernmost part of Venice Island. It's very local here. You can see the garbage uh, boats. I mean, I guess you kind of know you're lost when you don't see the tourists. From now on, I guess the idea is that lost equals local. Well, we almost ended up in someone's house just now. <laughs> Their door was just flat open. I'm like, oh, is this a pathway? I'm like, nope, that's somebody's kitchen. Yep. <laughs> this is their backyard, I guess, and their own boat that goes straight into the canal. But I get it's amazing you can have a little garden straight in the middle of Venice. And it's quiet again. It's so right? quiet. Saturday, middle of the day, completely quiet over here, except for us now. But, <laughs> but it's pretty awesome sometimes when you just you don't have a plan and you just kind of wander around. You can end up exploring places like this. It's just awesome. You know what we need after all this walking? Mm. We need to refuel with some uh, spritz and some chicchetti. The size of that door. Let me go. Let me go stand over there for scale. Oh my god! So Vern, would you live here? Look at this bridge. For a couple of days, yeah, definitely. For more than a week, no. Definitely not. I think it's just difficult to like the daily regular tasks just are so much more difficult here. Like it taking seems, out the garbage. It seems like a lot of work just to do things like go grocery shopping. Because obviously you can't have your car. Maybe you'd be able to drive your boat to the grocery store, but it seems like a pain in the ass. If you kind of want to get the gondola experience without paying 80 euro, you can take, I think it's a euro or two euro. It's like, two, it's like roughly $2. Um, and you can take the gondola across the canal and see if you actually like it or not. So the trick to this is when you're stepping into the boat, which is moving, do not fall. They will help you. So Venice pretty much has no wind. So this is the only wind you'll get. Feels pretty good though. So everything we do will be linked down below, but this is what you need to look for to try this gondola service out. This is like a bigger scale of what we go to every week in our town in Sicily. You know what the downside here is? What's that? You buy a bunch of stuff that you have to carry at home. Especially in those places that are like six and seven stories high. Good Ooh. luck. Just looking at these salamis and then... All horse. So the inside of this is all seafood. There must be like at least two dozen stalls in there. Wow, look at those crabs. Oh my God. <laughs> my hands are scale. And that's the whole fish next to some lobster. One of the things that these guys seem to have to struggle with is they have to shoo away all of the seagulls because because this is a huge seafood market, a lot of the seagulls just kind of swoop down and steal things like shrimp and other little pieces of fish that are around. So these guys are trying to chase them away while they're selling seafood to their customers. It's insane. I even found oysters. Wow, these look. Look at that. And everything smells so good. Like it it's fresh. Yeah, it doesn't have like the stinky smell of fish, it's like good smell of fish. And I think the award for the ugliest fish definitely goes to this guy. So this is the food you get when you're in Venice. You get chiquetti. It's like every single place has their own unique chiquetti. So you're never going to find the same ones in two different places. So the downside of some of these kinds of places is that it gets super busy and the restaurants are really, really tiny. So we ordered food, wine, and there's nowhere inside to sit down. So we had to come outside. No name next to any of them. So we just kind of started pointing at whatever looked good and we hope for the best. So here it goes. Mm. You know it's going to be good if it's fried on a stick. Olives. 
really good. These types of things are like aperitif. You have them before you have like an actual meal. But this is what you should be having in Venice. A lot of restaurants here, I don't want to say they're like tourist traps, but they are tourist traps. And I think we've had probably the worst pasta in our life. Would you recommend somebody that's never been to Venice where to eat in Venice? <laughs> uh, first off, watch our videos and eat where we eat. Or you kind of have to check out where the locals are eating. One of the things that you can't do is choose a restaurant that has the menu in English or even worse, multiple languages on the outside. That is an absolute tourist trap. No, another thing I was going to say, if the people are trying to like bring you inside the restaurant, don't go there. And honestly, a lot of times what helps us is check Google. Just make sure wherever you're going, check what other people said about it. Read their most recent reviews. If you're a foodie like we are, we love to use, what is it, the Michelin Guide? It's like a red little app, put it up right here. Uh, we use it all the time whenever we travel throughout Italy and just throughout like other parts of Europe. And we've never, never been disappointed. All these places are in the canal. Don't go here. They're terrible. I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is a great picture of how busy this bridge gets. Look at that. You are a sardine. So check this out. This is what you can expect when you really come to Venice. So imagine you come to Venice to so beautiful St. Marco Square and it's under construction. So the key when you come to St. Marco Square is do not get crapped on by the seagulls or the pigeons. So there's people playing music in that cafe behind me. When you go eat in that cafe, not only are you paying for an overpriced spritz and food, you also technically have to pay for the fact that you're enjoying their music. So these are just kind of like the little hidden fees you can get. So that's not a scam. It's just something to be aware of when you go to these like super touristy areas, you will be charged for everything. This is the reality what this bridge looks like if you're trying to get pictures. There's two types of traffic in, in Venice. Gondola traffic and this type of traffic. We've been here for just over three hours now and we have reached at least 10,000 steps. We have 10. Okay, so 10,000 steps in three hours. That's probably something you can expect because it, like we said earlier, it was a lot of walking and we were not joking about that. What are you ordering? Rigatoni. <laughs> I find that whenever you're ordering out at any restaurant anywhere in the world, the longer you take to order, the more likely you are to regret your choice. Always look at something, pick the first thing you like, stick with it. You won't regret it. After 12,000 steps, an Aperol is much needed. The last leg of the journey, the stairs. It's bitter, sweet, more sweet than bitter. I'm kind of tired and we can always come back, but this is pretty much it for us for today.